Hey guys, on today's video I'm going to talk about my top 5 tools and features of Adobe Photoshop CC 2021. However, I think all of them exist on many previous versions as well. These are the tools I mainly use when working in Photoshop, so it is from my perspective as a designer. Of course, each person has its own preferences depending on the expertise. As you probably have seen on my previous videos, many times I use Photoshop to create custom lettering designs and then decorate them with colors, highlights, shadows, details and adjust the final colors and style. So for creating the custom lettering, I usually use this first tool I'm going to talk about and it's the Mixer Brush tool. The Mixer Brush tool is an absolutely favorite. I remember when I found out about it and what are the possibilities of this tool, I was impressed. First and foremost, you can create fake 3D letters with it, which with some more adjustments they will actually look like a real 3D design. What it actually does is to mix the background with a preloaded brush you have chosen from another image. Let me show you what I mean. In order to use it, you go to the brush tool, you click and hold so you can see the other tools, and you go and select the last one. I'm going to use this image on the left as it will be better to have a colorful image so you will have a better effect but that depends also on the design. Also I have added a black background here to use the brush on top of that. First I'm going to click on the brush settings. In case you don't see these settings here, you can find them on the window tab at the top menu and select the brush settings. So I'm going to select a hard brush and make sure the spacing is reduced to minimum. Here at the top of this square is what is loaded for the brush to use. At the moment it doesn't have anything loaded. In order to load it you can press and hold the option on a Mac or the Alt key on a PC and you will see the icon of the cursor will change to that mark icon and you can select which part you need. You can select how large will be the selective area by just increasing or decreasing the size of the brush. So I'm click and hold the option key because I'm using a Mac. I see this mark icon and then I select a colorful spot. You see that now it has changed here on the square. Okay, now that I have loaded my brush, I can edit these settings here, which control various things like the amount of the mix how wet or how strong the brush will be, etc. But it's important to make sure the sample all layers box here is ticked. This will allow the mix to include the background colors as well. So let's try it as it is for now and see then if I change the settings how the result will change. I am drawing here as I normally would do with the brush and as you see the loaded color is used. If I change the mix setting here and increase it to something like 70, you will see that the brush is also includes the background color. You can also play with the other settings to improve the brush and see what it's changing. The second tool I use all the time is not actually a tool but a feature on the layers. I'm talking about the clipping masks. So clipping masks allow you to work only on specific areas but to be more precise only on the areas of the layer below it. It will be simpler if I show that on the design. So I have a custom letter which I created earlier with the mixer brush tool. Just to mention that I have created in a different layer from the background. Here is the background layer and here is the letter. And I would like to add some shadows and highlights manually with a brush tool. I will create a new layer, which I will name it Highlights. And I will take the brush tool. I click and hold here to take the first one, the brush tool. I have a white color. And I will select the smooth brush. So I right click. I have a smooth brush here. Maybe decrease the size a bit. I need to add some white color here on this side of the letter, like there is a light coming from the top. 
So I draw with a brush, but the result is not how I wanted. So what I need is just to make the highlights layer a clipping mask to the letter. That means that the highlights will be only visible on the areas of the letter and the rest will be hidden. So I go to highlights and I press and hold the option or alt key and when I see this arrow icon, I click. Another way to do it is by right clicking and select create clipping mask. Now as you can see the highlights are how I wanted. The same way I can add some shadows, so I create a new layer, name that shadows. I am making it a clipping mask too. I change the color of the brush to black. And then I draw on the opposite side of the light. So if I hide the background you can see the actual shadow, here. It would be more realistic if it had shadow also here on the vertical line. As it is on the background, normally the horizontal line would produce some shadow to that. However, if I draw, it's not only showing on the vertical line, so I need to select a more specific area. And this is where we go to my third favorite tool, which is the pen tool. The pen tool is well known to be used on Adobe Illustrator, but it is also very useful in Photoshop. You can find it here and you can do multiple things with it. I'm going to show only a couple of things I use all the time, which are the selections and the strokes and how you can use them. So as I said, I need to select a specific area here for the shadow. So I'm taking the pen tool. I click and drag to create the first point of the path with curve guides. And then I continue to create a path on the area I need to add the shadow. Then I close the path by returning to the first anchor point. Now if I right click with the pen tool selected of course, I have some options here and I'm going to choose the make selection option. In this case I don't need any feather so I leave it on zero and I click OK. So now a specific area is selected, so if I take the brush tool by pressing the letter B on the keyboard and draw, the shadow is only drawn where I need it to be. Then with the rectangular marquee tool, I click anywhere to deselect. Another useful feature of the pen tool is that we can add strokes, so in this case I will use it to add some signs. So I create a new layer. I'm taking the pen tool again and I'm creating a path following the shape of this line. I don't need to close it, so just right click and select stroke path. On here you can tell the pen from which tool to take the settings from. So if I select the brush, it will use that tool to include the color, the size and the shape of the brush. So you need to make sure these settings are how you need them. So I click cancel to double check them. I'm selecting the brush tool, I right click, I change it to a hard brush with a much smaller shape. The color is already white so that's fine. Now again with the pen selected, I right click again and select stroke path. I have the simulate pressure box ticked because I'm using a pen tablet and this will help to adjust the thickness of the line based on the pressure. I click OK and then just the delete button to delete the pen path. Let's move to the next favorite feature which is one of the adjustment layers and more specifically the curves adjustment layer. You can find that on the adjustment layers panel and again if you don't have it here on the side just select it from the window tab at the top menu. So I open the adjustment layers and I select the curves. This setting is very useful for any design and any photo as it can improve the levels of contrast very well without too much effort. Again, if the properties panel won't appear automatically, you can find that also on the window tab at the top menu. So on the curve, what we need to do on this case is to increase the bright tones at the top and lower the dark tones at the bottom of the curve. 
Just be careful to not overdo it because this can ruin your design. Finally, another great adjustment layer is one of my favorites, which is the color lookup. This is kind of a cheat feature as it adjusts the colors and the appearance of the design automatically by selecting one of the options available. If you are familiar with video editing, it is similar on how you use LUTs on Premiere Pro for example to edit the color style. We can find it again on the adjustment layers panel and it is this icon here. Now you can just simply check the available options from the drop down menus to choose which one you prefer. So these were some of my favorite tools in Photoshop which I use quite often. Let me know in the comments below if you use them too and if you have any other favorite tools which stand out for you. I hope you enjoyed this video, until next time, like, share and subscribe. Bye.